Nothing in this podcast or on our website should be construed as medical advice. Consult your healthcare provider for your individual nutritional and medical needs. The information presented is based on our research and is strictly that of the author and not necessarily those of any professional group or other individual. Hi, I'm Sue Becker from Bread Beckers. Welcome to Sue's Healthy Minutes. I'm so excited you've joined me today, and I hope this episode encourages you and allows you to find the answers you have been praying for, for the health of you and your family. In the last episode of Sue's Healthy Minutes, entitled Eat More Fiber, we looked more deeply into the many other health benefits of both soluble and insoluble fiber besides simply relieving constipation. And we have really only scratched the surface. Today, as promised, I want to share with you about a unique component of soluble fiber found in particularly high concentrations of both oats and barley. Other grains such as wheat, rye, and sorghum also have this unique fiber, but oats and barley have the highest concentration of really any food. What is this fiber? It's known as beta-glucans. I have been studying the health benefits of whole grains and freshly milled flour since 1992, and I have to say that I have certainly acquired some information and wisdom about whole grains, real bread, and the common diseases that plague many Americans. It's truly been an amazing journey, and I love to share what I've learned with others. In 2015, while writing my book, The Essential Home Ground Flour Book, I was inspired to do some more concentrated research on the nutritional attributes of different grains. I devoured every bit of information I could get my hands on, and I must say I became more than excited when I discovered this unique soluble fiber found abundantly in both oats and barley known as beta-glucans. While beta-glucans has been a recent discovery for me, there's actually been an increased interest and study of the nutritional benefits of this unique fiber for more than 25 years. In fact, of all the components of fiber studied for their function and contribution to health, beta-glucans have been the most extensively documented. So what exactly are beta-glucans and what is their nutritional benefit? Beta-glucans are a polysaccharide, or simply a complex sugar, found in the soluble fiber of most whole grains, but have a particularly high concentration in both oats and barley. Nutritionally, Beta-glucans trigger a cascade of events in the human body that help regulate the immune system, making it more efficient. Beta-glucans stimulate the activity of a specific type of white blood cell known as macrophages that surround and kill microorganisms, remove dead cells, and stimulate the action of other immune system cells. Macrophages ingest and demolish invading pathogens and stimulate other immune cells to attack invaders. Macrophages also release cytokines, a type of small protein which enable immune cells to communicate with each other. Cytokines can either stimulate the immune system or slow it down as needed. These cytokines also stimulate the movement of cells towards sites of inflammation, infection, and trauma. And studies show that through this trigger of events, beta-glucans can reduce the incidence of infection in patients with high-risk surgeries, as well as shorten intensive care unit stay and improve the survival rate. Studies have also shown that beta-glucans can stimulate white blood cells that bind to tumor cells and viruses and release chemicals to actually destroy these cells. Bottom line, of all the polysaccharides studied that act as immunostimulants, 
beta-glucans were found to be the most effective against infectious disease and cancer. In my previous episode of Sue's Healthy Minutes, I shared about soluble fiber's role in lowering cholesterol, in stabilizing blood sugar levels, and helping with weight loss. Well, it's the beta-glucans found in the soluble fiber that is responsible for these health benefits. It's the beta-glucans that form that gelatinous substance which slows digestion and absorption in the small intestines, giving you that feeling of fullness for much longer and contributing to better appetite control and weight management as well as blood sugar levels and insulin response. If you've ever made a warm bowl of oatmeal for breakfast, you have most likely experienced its gooey, gummy texture. The gumminess comes from the high concentration of beta-glucans in the soluble fiber found in oats. And this is what gives oats its stick-to-your-ribs reputation. Beta-glucans is also the component in soluble fiber that seems to restore the activity of our friendly gut organisms, promoting the production of numerous critical nutrients from gut fermentation. You might remember the importance of gut fermentation presented in Episode 9, That Army Within Us. Beta-glucans are found in other grains and beans such as wheat, rye, sorghum, and lentils, and even in some fruits and vegetables and mushrooms. But oats and barley are most definitely our richest food sources. So maybe all this information and talk about beta-glucans hasn't excited you as much as it does me. However, I hope that it may at least inspire you to eat more barley and oats. For most of us, oats are familiar food, and it will be easy to incorporate oats into our meal planning. A bowl of oatmeal or granola, and hey, who doesn't love an oatmeal cookie? Barley, on the other hand, may be a little more challenging. You might be familiar with pearled barley, as it's perhaps best known as a tasty addition to soups and stews, but it is not the best option nutritionally. Barley is sold in two forms, hulled and pearled. Pearled barley has some of the bran polished off, diminishing both the fiber and nutrient content. Hulled barley has the bran intact, so is more nutritious than pearled barley. Hulled barley can easily be substituted in any recipe calling for pearled barley. I typically use soft wheat flour for my biscuits, pastries, and cookies, but I recently discovered that barley flour alone works very well in cookies and actually adds a wonderful depth of flavor. And substituting just some of the soft wheat flour with barley flour works very well in my non-yeasted quick breads and biscuits and cakes. I've also started substituting barley for rice as a side dish, cooking it whole, just like you would brown rice, or even in some of my favorite recipes that call for rice, like my Cuban black beans and barley or delicious citrus infused barley. You can find these two recipes along with my barley chocolate chip cookie recipe, as well as my delicious chai tea oatmeal or Haitian oatmeal recipes on our website, breadbeckers.com. At Breadbeckers, we sell hulled barley as well as oat groats and rolled oats. It might be good to note here that for food storage purposes, oats, whether rolled or groats, along with brown rice, do not store long term. In other grains such as wheat and spelt and barley, the oils in the seed are located only in the germ, so are well protected from oxidation if the grain is stored whole and intact. Most grains and beans will store long-term if packaged properly. But with oats, the oils are located in all three parts of the seed, the bran, the germ, and the endosperm. So once the inedible hull of the oat groat is removed, 
the oats are very susceptible to rapid oxidation. So all oats, whether rolled or groats, are steamed to slow this oxidation down. But oats still only have a shelf life of about six months to a year, and they should be stored in a cool place. Brown rice, like oats, only has a short shelf life as well of six months to a year. The oils in brown rice are located in the bran. To prevent spoilage, the bran is often polished off, giving us white rice that will store indefinitely, but is now nutritionally devoid of the fiber and the B vitamins and other nutrients provided by the nutrient-rich bran. That is why I think barley makes a perfect storable food instead of brown rice and packs a fiber punch with nearly eight times the fiber found in brown rice. Now, we don't want to eat foods just because they're nutritious, but because they are delicious as well. In fact, my husband Brad has a saying that if foods don't taste good, they are not good for you. Now, you may laugh, but why is this true? Because you won't stick with eating them. Kind of like that exercise equipment you may have bought. The exercise it gives you may be great for you, but if you don't enjoy it or use it, it's not helping you one bit. That's why I love whole grains and real bread. It's healthy food you will eat, love, and enjoy. The health benefits are like the icing on a cake. Grains, of course, are one of the most nutrient-dense food groups God has given us. They are both nutritious and delicious, and their variety, flavor, and versatility are nearly limitless. And better still, they come with a blessing from God. In Exodus 23, 25, God says to the Israelites that if you will serve me, I will bless your bread and I will bless your water and I will take sickness from the midst of you. Let us pray for this blessing today as we enjoy our real bread and our whole grains, including, I hope, more oats and barley. Until next time, this is Sue Becker from Bread Beckers with Sue's Healthy Minutes. Sue's Healthy Minutes podcast has been a presentation by the Bread Beckers Incorporated located in Woodstock, Georgia. For more information, store hours, and learning opportunities, visit breadbeckers.com and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Make sure to subscribe to this podcast and never miss an episode. Share this with two friends who would benefit from this information and be sure to join us again next week for more of Sue's Healthy Minutes.